In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this offset transition instead of After Effects. Now to create this transition, obviously you need two clips. So I have this footage right here that just transitions into the second clip right here. So the first thing that I need to do is actually go over to the second clip here and rotoscope out our subject. Just by selecting that clip, you just want to go to the rotor brush and click on this layer. Just make a outline around your subject or whatever you're trying to rotoscope out. Once you have finished rotoscoping, you can go here and freeze your rotor brush and we can go back into our main composition. And then you want to take the clip that you just rotoscoped out and move it over like 20 frames over this first clip here. Then we want to go into the effects and presets and search up offset and bring this onto our rotoscoped out clip. And then you want to go to the part of your timeline where this like first clip ends right here and then just select that clip and set a keyframe for the shift center to set a keyframe at the default value here. Then we can go back to the start right here and mess with this value. You can move it to wherever you want it to be. And the higher the value, then the faster this animation is going to go. We can also easy ease these keyframes. So if you hit U, and highlight these and hit F9 on your keyboard. It'll easy ease these. Then we can go into the graph editor and just kind of create a graph like this. And as you can see with that graph, it looks a lot better. It just like smooths out everything. So now what we can do is duplicate this layer here that has the rotor brush. And on this bottom one, let's just delete the offset and the rotor brush here. Then you just want to go to the part again where this first clip like ends and then just trim this clip down. So the second clip starts right after the first. And there we go. That's already looking super clean. You could honestly just be done with this and just have this like kind of cut here. But if you want to add a few more effects and just make it look a bit cleaner, then we can go ahead and do so. So I'm just going to drag this clip out just a few frames like this and hit P to open up the position. And then let's just set a keyframe at the end of this first clip again and then go to the start and then just bring this clip down. So it's like underneath the frame here. Then let's just select these keyframes and create another graph. So something like this where it kind of goes fast towards the middle and we can even expand these keyframes out maybe a bit more. Now, if you want to add just another effect that kind of looks cool, what we can do is duplicate these rotor brush layers here. So I'm just going to duplicate it twice. So we have three of these rotoscoped out uh, comps here and I'm just going to offset these by one frame. So just going one frame over to these clips here so they kind of like stack on each other and when we play this back you can kind of see what happens there it's kind of trippy but it'll look cool once we have some different like glow effects on it but with these uh two clips that we duplicated we just want to trim them at the end here so these clips just go away once the effect like finishes so on these two clips that we just duplicated we can go here and add some glow i'm just going to add the default glow from after effects here let's just mess up the threshold and then make the glow radius like 100 here then we can make the original colors to a and b colors and i'm just going to go for something like green for both color a and color b and what i can do is just duplicate this glow here hit control c and control v to paste it onto the second clip here. And I'm just gonna change these colors to like a blue, maybe like a light blue like this. And here is how this effect looks like. So it's pretty trippy. It looks kind of cool. It's a little bit different than just having those effects toggled off. Another thing we can do is actually add motion blur to this, because obviously when we play this back, there's no motion blur at all. And when you turn motion blur on, it actually doesn't do anything. So to fix that, we kind of have to fake it. So let's just go ahead and add directional blur here. And we're just going to make the blur length like 40 and make the direction 90 degrees. I'm actually going to make the blur length 60, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to keyframe the blur length at the start right here and then go to where the clip finishes moving and bring this back down to zero. So now you can see that clip actually has a motion blur to it. And what we can do is duplicate this directional blur to our other footage here. So let's just say control C, control V again just to those other clips there. And there we go, that already looks a lot better with the motion blur on. And what I can do is just fade out these clips here, the two ones that have the effect on it by hitting the opacity and just making it go down just a bit like this. There we go, that looks pretty clean. And the last thing we can actually add is some shake to kind of emphasize on this like impact right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually just pre-compose all these layers here. And I'm going to split the layers right where like this effect pretty much finishes or this transition. So control shift D splits them. And on the second layer here, I'm just going to go over here and add some shake. You guys can go ahead and add whatever shake you guys want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and apply my uh, presets here. So let's just go ahead and add shake one and toggle on motion blur and see how that looks. There we go. That already looks a lot better. We can even go ahead and go into my turbulent presets here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add this small turbulent here. See how that looks. 
actually like how that looks a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that effect. And there we go. That is pretty much all you have to do. And it makes everything just look a lot better. Also, if you guys do want to go ahead and download my Turbulent presets or my Shake, I'll have it down in the description below. And I have a few tutorials on how to use them and download them and all that. So make sure to go ahead and check those out. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.